In this video, we're going to tell you the entire story of Black Noir from the boys comics. There are full spoilers ahead. You have been warned. Introducing Black Noir. The first time we see Black Noir in the original comic book run of the boys is within the pages of its third issue. Here we get introduced to the seven. Black Noir, along with other teammates like Homelander, Queen Maeve, A-Train, and The Deep all welcome the new recruit to their superhero team, Annie January, aka Starlight. During this first appearance, the series makes you think that Black Noir is just this background character in dark tights. That is until you discover that he, Homelander, and A-Train decide to quote unquote initiate Starlight into their team. This pretty much sets the tone for who Black Noir is. He may be a strong silent type, but he's just as much of a monster as the rest of the superheroes in the boys world. He's also the most mysterious member of the Seven on account of no one. Not even Homelander knows exactly who Black Noir is under the mask, nor did he even care to look. Other than that, he's simply this quiet, intimidating presence that no one dares to cross. The next day, after Starlight's traumatic initiation to the group, we see Black Noir in a meeting with the rest of the Seven. And as you'd expect, the man doesn't say a single word, as nearly the rest of the team argue about their Vought royalties and dividends from their merch and advertising opportunities. In fact, most of Black Noir's succeeding appearances have him relegated to the background. We see him featured as a bit of a player in a Vought-sponsored Seven commercial with the rest of the team in issue 6 of the series, and in fact, we don't even get to see Black Noir again for another 10 issues after that as we find out that the boys are spying on these Vought-owned superheroes during one of their usual meetings. The same applies when we see Black Noir tailing Homelander and Vought executive James Stilwell while they have a chat in the company's hallway in issue 14 of the series. Because as we mentioned, one of the few things that people know about Noir is that he always seems to be where Homelander is. And at this point in the story, all all we know is Homelander and Black Noir are just a couple of buddies. Black Noir, Dark Enforcer. Now, Black Noir's whole dark, silent, and brooding shtick depicts him as nothing but a character that prefers to operate in the shadows, but that doesn't mean that he's a minor character. In fact, he's one of Homelander's primary enforcers within the Seven, as we discover that he's one of the team's members to attend a sit-down with the boys sometime later. At this point, you should know that prior to the start of this series, the boys led by everyone's favorite anti-hero Billy Butcher have a standing truce with Vought American and the Seven. In fact, it's the only thing preventing the two groups from going off on each other. However, recent events at this point in the story has led Homelander to think that the boys are in breach of this ceasefire. So they have themselves a meeting, which pretty much ends with both groups saying, we have our eyes on you. And while all this is happening, the main protagonist of the story and the boys' newest recruit, Huey, discovers how superheroes were originally created in their world. The long and short of it is that Vought hired a World War II era German scientist who came up with a drug called Compound V, which they then used to inject into the wombs of pregnant volunteers. This ultimately led to the birth of the world's first bonafide American superhero, Homelander. Soon after that, other Compound V-powered superheroes were created, such as Black Noir, and Vought American decided to capitalize on the opportunity to form their premier superhero team, The Seven. Huey also finds out that Black Noir and The Seven are basically the top-shelf superheroes that Vought created, all thanks to the fact that they were made with the purest version of Compound V. All the other superhumans that followed them are significantly weaker because the company used a more diluted version of the drug to create them. As Huey continues his investigation, he ultimately finds out about a huge secret about Black Noir and the rest of the Seven. The same secret that the boys are using as their trump card to keep these superheroes and the company in check. It's revealed that Vought American's plan, ever since they unlocked the secrets to creating superheroes, was to worm its way into the US military. They plan on doing this using their proprietary products, the superheroes, and replace conventional weapons of war in the process. Huey finds out that Vought American made moves back in 2001 to convince the US military to allow Black Noir and the Seven to handle the plane attacks, while well, suffice it to say that it did not go well. In its aftermath, Vought American covered up the whole disaster, but the boys have this dirt on the Seven, and it's one of the reasons why the company, Homelander, or Black Noir can't make a move against them. The long and short of it is, if any superhero even touches a single hair on one of the boys, the truth comes out. Black Noir makes moves. For the most part, we continue to see Black Noir laying low as the boys' story continues. That is until we reach Herogasm, an annual party where all the superheroes gather for some, let's just say, R&R. &R. Curiously enough, you won't see Black Noir at Homelander's tail during this party. That's because Noir is creeping up on Huey somewhere else. You see guys, the boys are in the same area 
area where Herogasm is happening to gather even more dirt on Vought's superheroes, which explains why Huey is there. We discover that Black Noir has spotted the superhero Hitman. Huey notices that someone has followed him, so he runs deep into the city's sewer system, but Black Noir eventually gets to him. Noir strangely pulls at Huey's shorts before telling him that he's a good soldier and promptly knocks him out. While all this is happening, we get a little bit more information about Black Noir and Homelander's relationship, courtesy of the seven members A-Train and Jack from Jupiter, as they gossip about their teammates. According to Jack, all he knows is that Homelander and Black Noir go way back, and that maybe Queen Maeve is the only other member who knows more about them. In addition to that, Jack reveals that Vought purposely set up Black Noir to be the team's resident dark and mysterious vigilante, which explains why almost all the other members of the seven have no idea about his whole deal. A-Train asks why don't they just confront the rest of the team about this to, you know, find some answers about Black Noir. But Jack is completely against this. According to him, he and A-Train have a good thing going with the Seven. Let them keep their secrets and enjoy the perks of being an A-list superhero. Now, the next time that we see Black Noir is during this post herogasm Superhero Award Ceremony, where Homelander pretty much gets all the trophies because of course he does. Noir, as per usual, serves as a background character waiting in the shadows. But what's notable about this particular part of the story is this is where we witness Homelander's descent into madness. After receiving his Superhero of the Year award, the leader of the Seven starts going on this tirade about how superheroes should basically be the apex predators of the world. His rant only stops when Stillwell, the Vought executive, arrives at the ceremony. Still, there's no going back from this. Homelander has become unhinged, and we're about to find out, soon enough, Noir's part to play in all of this. Vought American decided to revamp the Seven's costumes to make them more marketable. Most notably among this is what they did to Starlight's suit, which had her wearing something extremely revealing. Starlight refuses to go along with this, so she refrains from wearing the prescribed uniform. Black Noir sees this, and without saying a word, puts fear into Starlight as he tries to force her to wear the new suit. In fact, Black Noir is so intimidating that he instantly makes Starlight grovel when he tries to hand her the new costume, while all the other members of the Seven back off knowing that things are about to get serious. This confrontation only stops when Queen Maeve, who has since gained a degree of affection and respect for Starlight, intervenes and stands up to Black Noir. The Seven's resident Dark Avenger ultimately drops the matter and leaves. After this, Black Noir goes back to his old silent ways. We see him at the funeral of fellow Vought superhero Soldier Boy, and as for the wider world of the series, you should be aware at this point that Stillwell, the former Vought executive, has been promoted to basically become the company's head. We find him and Jess Bradley, his right-hand woman, discussing a series of incriminating photographs depicting Homelander, doing some exceedingly gruesome acts. They reveal that the Butcher and the Boys sent these pictures to them, reporting that the scenes depicted in the photos happened around 20 years ago. So again, that's more ammunition for the boys should they decide to make a move against the Seven and Vought. But more importantly, Jess and Stillwell are more concerned that Homelander is becoming a problem to the company, especially after the whole deal during the awards ceremony. Butcher and the boys had even sent the same photos to Homelander himself as a warning that they had this kind of dirt on him. But curiously enough, Homelander has no recollection of ever doing these things. As the series goes on, we eventually find out that Queen Maeve's been working with the boys for around a decade prior to the start of the series. According to Butcher, this all stems from a deep-seated hatred that Maeve has for Homelander. Now you might be wondering, what does all this have to do with Black Noir? Black Noir's big reveal. Everything that's been going on between the boys, the Seven, and Vought American all comes to a boiling point when Homelander finally loses the final screw in his head and moves to conduct a hostile takeover of the US government. At this point in the story, Homelander has gone from Vought's number one asset to its biggest problem. So much that Jess Bradley even suggests nuking Homelander to put a stop to his antics. When Stillwell hears this, he reassures his confidant that Vought American has its own anti-Homelander deterrent in place. One important thing that you should know before we proceed is that Billy Butcher is motivated by revenge. He believes that Homelander forced himself on his wife, which ultimately led to her death. Ever since, he's been on a warpath to destroy Vought's very own Golden Boy. So while in DC, Butcher heads over to the Oval Office to discover that Homelander has eliminated Vought-controlled leader Vic the V. Suddenly, Black Noir appears out of nowhere, just as he and Butcher start to talk about his late wife. And it's here that we get a barrage of revelations about everything that's been going on in this series. For one, we find out that Queen Maeve hates Homelander's guts because he tricked her into sleeping with Black Noir in the past. But it's here that we finally discover Black Noir's true origins as well. Remember when still 
Stilwell told Jess Bradley that the company had its very own anti-Homelander measure in place? Yeah, it's Black Noir. He's the superhuman tailor-made to destroy Homelander. But there's one thing that the company failed to take into account when they created Black Noir. He's incredibly insane. Huey wonders if Vought sent Black Noir to the White House to take out Homelander at this moment, but we'll discover that this whole turn of events goes way deeper than that. Because inside the Oval Office, Homelander tells Butcher that he has no memory whatsoever of assaulting his late wife. And in that moment, Black Noir reveals himself to Butcher and Homelander, with both men wondering what he's even doing there. Well, the answer is, Black Noir is here to fulfill his purpose, that is, to eliminate Homelander. And you know what? Black Noir is Homelander. Well, his clone to be exact. We find out that Black Noir has been subtly manipulating the events that led to Homelander's insanity and this ongoing beef he has with the boys. Remember those incriminating photos that show Homelander doing some really, really bad stuff and how Homelander himself doesn't have any memory of it? That's because it isn't him in those photos. It's Black Noir. This ultimately resulted in Homelander convincing himself that he's actually a monster and there's no point in even trying to pretend to be a hero. This led to him going crazy and mounting this offensive against the government. And you know how the boys got their hands on those photos? It was Black Noir that sent it to them. This was all part of Black Noir's master plan to drive Homelander into insanity and ultimately force Vought's hands into allowing him to fulfill his prime directive to take out Homelander permanently. And finally, we get an idea about the reason behind that whole thing that happened with Huey and Black Noir in the sewers all the way back during Herogasm. You see, Black Noir is even crazier and more perverse than Homelander, which explains why he did that to Huey and as for why he told Huey that he was a good soldier. That's because Black Noir appreciated the fact that what Huey and the boys were doing to Homelander, gathering dirt on him and all, would ultimately lead to the man becoming more unhinged, which brings Noir closer to having Vought give him the kill order against the leader of the Seven. Plus, we also get the reveal as to the whole reason why Black Noir is always next to Homelander pretty much wherever they go. Call it whatever you want, be it dedication or obsession, but finding out Noir was basically looking at Homelander this whole time as his prey after all this time is pretty chilling. So the long and short of it is that Black Noir pretty much orchestrated almost everything that led to this moment inside the White House. And as for his motives, remember, he was created to destroy Homelander and that's what he aims to do. After realizing all this, Homelander lashes out when he discovers how Black Noir basically manipulated him this entire time. He thinks that he could have been an actual honest to goodness superhero if his clone didn't gaslight him into thinking that he was a monster deep down inside. In the end, Homelander and Black Noir have a big fight inside the Oval Office. Meanwhile, Butcher, knowing that getting caught inside the crossfire is a bad idea, sneaks out of the White House and back to the perimeter with Huey and the military. A few moments later, we see Black Noir stepping out into the White House's front lawn, and he's a little worse for wear to say the least, but he got what he wanted, because he might be missing a few limbs and a little bit of skin, but Homelander is gone for good. Butcher and the military start to light up Black Noir until he's too weak to stand up, and now, well aware of who truly killed his wife, Butcher approaches the insane, battle-damaged clone and delivers the killing blow.